If you've ever wanted to get started in real estate but just don't have the money, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have seven strategies to invest in real estate with no money down, plus three critical points you can use with any property strategy. We're talking real estate investing today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click on that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. One of the biggest problems in real estate investing is that huge cost to buy properties. Even a lower down payment can mean tens of thousands and it's the root of a lot of risks. With that kind of commitment, most investors just aren't able to buy more than a few properties. That leaves them exposed to all the risks in those specific property types and in within that specific region. So they have all their money in just a few properties and are facing bankruptcy at the first sign of trouble. Worse still though, it's just that it locks so many people out of real estate investing. There's no other asset that has created as much generational wealth as property. I challenge you to find one single billionaire without real estate investments. And the fact that so many people can't afford to get some of that just isn't right. Now, I've been investing in real estate for over 20 years since just getting out of the Marine Corps. I was able to save up about 30 grand while in the Corps, but even that wasn't enough to really get involved in property investing. So I had to look for all the ways to invest in real estate with no money down. Now that necessity was the mother of invention. I was forced to find all those ways of buying property without those traditional costs. I'm going to share seven of these strategies, seven ways you can get started in real estate for little or no money down. Some of these you'll be able to start with no credit or even bad credit. I'm then going to reveal three keys to real estate investing that are going to help you be successful in any of these strategies. These are three critical points you need to remember to grow your wealth and avoid the biggest risks in property investing. So make sure you stick around to watch those three keys because no matter which of these seven investment strategies you choose, these three hacks are going to make you successful. First though, I'd love to hear from the community. If you've ever looked at investing in real estate or obviously you're interested in property investing now, what strategy have you been thinking of starting with and what property type? Are you thinking about rental real estate with houses or maybe commercial property like office buildings? Scroll down and tell us in the comments below so we can get a sense of where everyone is at in the community. This first no money strategy is one of my favorites because it takes a lot of those risks out of the buy and hold rental strategy. I call this one the lease option strategy but I've also heard it called contract investing and seller financing as well. This strategy involves buying a rental property and using some of those investing keys we'll talk about later to get that no money or low money down and then immediately renting it out on a lease option to your tenants. Now a lease option is just a contract between you and the renters that are buying the home. Your tenants pay the normal rent you would usually get out of the house but also an additional amount that goes to paying off the home in their name. This property strategy works on so many levels so I really want to detail how to do it and how to be successful because it's probably the one I've seen work best for a lot of beginning real estate investors. So your tenants are going to be giving you a down payment when they sign the lease contract so that down payment is going to cancel out anything you've got in the house when you bought it. That's how you're going to get this house for no money down. Since this is seller financing meaning you're acting as the bank for your tenants to buy the house, the interest rate and the purchase price are also going to be a little higher as well. So let's look at an example and this is actually straight from one of the houses I've sold on a lease option. This was the second house I bought, a 768 square foot two bedroom on Franklin Avenue. I got this one on a short sale from the bank so I was able to take over the payments and put just $3,000 down. So I went in and changed the carpets, painted and put down some tile floors for less than $2,000 and then put it on the market. I had about $5,000 in the house at this point and another $38,000 on the loan and I put it on the market for $50,000 and was able to sign a lease option with tenants within a month. Now there's a lot there, how I saved money doing the repairs myself, how I found the deal in the first place and, and how I found those tenants. This is already going to be an epic video on those no money down real estate strategies and I can't get off track with these other ideas no matter how important they are. What I can do is link to another real estate video in the video description below that's going to give you these general level tricks that I picked up over 20 years of property investing. But I want to get back to that lease option strategy though because we've got six more no money down strategies. Now the tenants put down $5,000 so completely cashing me out of what I put in the property. They paid $600 a month which included their loan and the escrow for utilities and property taxes. Now that escrow is important because you don't want to rely on tenants to pay for these things. I've seen tenants move out of a property and leave a $1,000 utility bill for the owner to pay. 
Not only was I able to price the property for 16% more than what I paid for it, the interest rate on that lease option was 8.5%. And this was early in the 2000s, so that was still a few percent above the rates on money I was borrowing at the time. Now, if you've ever tried the buy and rent strategy, the benefits of this lease option strategy are immediately obvious. With regular renters, you're constantly fixing things. Vacancies can be as high as 10 or 15% and tenants just don't respect the property. Now, why should they? The most they have to lose is that security deposit. But with that lease option strategy for investing in real estate, tenants pay all the repairs on the property because it's their responsibility. They self-manage because if they don't make those lease payments, they're going to lose everything they put into it. Your vacancy drops to almost zero and you have no realtor fees. I've done five lease options on just two houses, so what's that going to tell you? Over a 10 year time period, people just get tired of living in the same house. They just stop making those lease payments or for whatever reason, half of these lease options are going to come back to you. That means you basically had a rental property that whole time but with no repair costs, no vacancies and you were collecting more than you could have on just straight rent. Even on the properties that close out though, where the tenants actually make all those lease payments, you've still made an amazing return on the higher price and that higher interest rate. And it's still a property that costs you nothing after the down payment on that lease. So whether you're renting out properties now or just plan on trying one of those other real estate strategies we'll talk about, I highly recommend trying the lease option on one or two houses. It's a great way to take that landlord stress out of real estate investing. Now our next strategy for buying real estate with no money is taking advantage of an FHA loan. This is a special loan program meant to help people buy their first home but you can actually use it as an investor as well. With an FHA loan you get a property for as little as 3.5% down and even on bad credit. So now, in fact I've seen people with a credit score as low as 580 FICO get an FHA loan. This is just such a great strategy. I love it because it opens up real estate to so many people. We talk about the income inequality in this country, how the richest 1% own more than half the wealth. Well, this is the way we fight that. Just about anyone can get one of these loans and I'm going to show you how to turn it into an investment. There are a couple of ways to do this to qualify for that sweet FHA loan. The program requires you to live in the home for at least a year after the loan closes. I've seen people move out within 7 or 8 months with no problems but even a year is an easy price to pay for what turns out to be a very cheap loan. According to Zillow, the rate on a 30 year FHA loan is 4% right now. Now that's about half a percent lower than comparable loans and the government program makes it so anyone can get this loan. So let's do the math here because you know I'm all about that math. Say you buy a $125,000 home on the FHA program. That's about a 3.5% down means you put about $4,000 down and your payments are $577 a month. I know everyone in the coastal community right now is rolling their eyes. These are Midwest prices but the math still works out on those er other areas because you're getting more on the rent. So you live in the house for a year and then start renting it out for $675 a month plus the tenant pays utilities. You have about $1,200 a year that goes to property taxes, repairs and other expenses. Now you're making about $4,000 a year on the loan payoff plus another $4,500 on price appreciation. That's almost nine grand a year on a house that costs you just $4,000 down payment. Something you could easily have put on a credit card and then paid off with the rents. So one thing we'll say for a different video but it's going to be a huge part of your returns in real estate investing is that ability to shield a lot of your income with that depreciation expense. Now this means you can take a portion of your investments value every year and take that off of your cash flow. It's one of the biggest benefits to real estate investing. With the FHA program I've seen younger investors buy a larger home and immediately start renting out rooms even while they were living there. This is what I did in my early 20s though it was with a, a VA veterans loan instead of the FHA program. I had a five bedroom house and had three roommates at all times paying off the mortgage and then some. Now one of those three success hacks to real estate I'll share about after these seven strategies is really going to boost your profits on that less rental strategy. So make sure you stick around to get those. Our third real estate with no money strategy is a twist on that FHA loan and one that I recommend to all new investors. This one is called house hacking. It's where you buy a duplex or even a larger triplex on an FHA loan, you live in one of the units and then rent out the other two. Now I've also heard this one called training wheels for real estate investing and it's absolutely true. With this strategy you get multiple rental units but without a lot of the problems that comes with jumping right into single family houses. The problem with investing in single family rentals is you've got half an hour or more travel time for any repairs. With three houses you've got three times the property taxes, three times the insurance and other expenses. You've also got just got more house to worry about right? Three roofs, three completely separate plumbing and electrical systems. House hacking cuts this by half or more and it's a great way to get started investing in real estate. 
Again, you've got almost no money down in that FHA loan. I know three or 4,000 might not seem like a no money real estate strategy, but you can easily save that in less than a year or just put it on a new card with a 0% one year rate. I recommend that house hacking strategy to almost all new investors. I actually made the mistake of doing exactly the opposite, buying all single family rental houses when I started out and the property management was a constant headache. I share the entire heartbreaking story in another real estate investing video that I'll link to in the video description below. So check that out if you want all the horrific details. But use this house hacking strategy first to get a feel for real estate rentals and then decide if you want to buy more properties after a year or two. This next real estate investing strategy is to partner with real estate investors in a portfolio. Now real estate is an amazing asset that offers some of the best returns and tax advantages you'll find, but it can also take a lot of time and work. That creates a huge base of investors, people that want that direct exposure to property, but just don't have the time to manage it themselves. So I want to talk about structuring your real estate partnerships with investors, as well as how to find those investors, because those are really going to be the two things that trip the most people up. It can be hard enough finding investors, but then making that partnership run as smoothly as possible is going to be critical to your success. Now with this strategy, it's going to help if you can show some experience and credibility before you go looking for investors. So you might want to start with some of these other real estate investing strategies we're talking about. Put in two or three years to produce some really good returns on your own property investments so you can show investors case studies or examples to sell that partnership idea. Now you can structure your real estate partnerships in a couple of different ways. First, you can offer either a debt or an equity investment in the deal. And equity investments means they put up the money and then just get paid out from the free cash flow and the eventual sale. A debt investment is a loan, so you're committing to pay semi-annual or quarterly interest and then pay the loan off in full, usually with a lump sum after three to five years. Obviously, the equity structure is less risky because you don't have that debt commitment, but you also have the potential that you have to share those profits. With the equity investment, investors might want to say in the, how the project is managed as well, but you can decide on how their level of involvement when you write up that partnership contract. The second part of this is how you formally structure the partnership. Who gets what in the deal? Now, I would highly recommend you set up an LLC, a limited liability corporation for each partnership deal you make. That's going to spell out everything legally and keep your personal wealth separate from it. It costs less than a couple hundred dollars to set up an LLC and all the profits flow through to the partners. So there's no extra tax problems. Now, as far as who gets what in the deal, who puts up the money and who gets the profits, there is a couple of ways you can do this. There's a few things you can do to get more investor interest and, and a couple of things that are really going to help the deal go smoothly. First, real estate partnerships almost always mean the investor puts up the down payment, closing costs, and usually a reserve fund and an initial renovation cost. This is basic and really the reason why you're bringing on an investor to pay those initial costs so you can invest in real estate with no money on your side. How the investor is paid back is the part you can play around with. If you're a newer real estate developer or someone looking to fund a larger project, you might have to offer a little bit more. If it's a smaller deal or you can show an almost 100% certainty of return, then you might be able to get enough investor funding from terms that are more beneficial to yourself. So one partnership I've seen that works really well is the investor puts up all the initial money and then everyone splits net cash each month on a 50-50 basis. Now, when I say net cash each month, don't forget that you want to estimate an annual amount for things like vacancy, repairs, and taxes. This is going to build up a reserve fund. So when these large expenses come due, it doesn't push you into negative cash flow and you're not forced to out of pocket for the mortgage. With this kind of deal, usually the investor gets paid back their initial investment. So that down payment and costs first when the property is sold, then everyone splits 50, 50, the profits from the deal. This is a sweet deal for both sides because you have absolutely no money in the project, but you get half the cash flows and half that ending profit. The investor gets half the cash flows and profit, plus they're paid out their initial investment at the end as well. I've also seen partners try to structure this kind of a deal where the investor gets paid back monthly from cash flows to pay back that initial investment. So you take maybe 20% of the cash flows each month and use that to pay off the investor's part and then split the rest of the cash flows 50 50. At the end of the project, if the investor has received their initial investment back already, then the profits are just split 50 50. This is a little more persuasive for the investor because they get paid back earlier, uh, but you still do well because you're getting that 50 50 split on known money invested. Now I've seen a couple of these partnerships set up with only the main partner's name on the mortgage. This is obviously better for you because you have full legal control of the property. Even if the partnership agreement gives the investor some rights. Now, a lot of times people do this if the investor has already reached that 10 mortgage limit or if their credit score is so low that they would hurt getting a mortgage. 
You can also try putting the property in the LLC so it owns the property in the partnership. That usually gives the investor more rights and seems a little bit fairer for both sides. As for finding investors for this real estate strategy, this is really where becoming active in those real estate investing groups is, is going to come in handy and we'll see that again in our last no money down strategy. Uh, there are a few places and ideas I want to highlight here, so good sources for finding real estate investors. First is the National Real Estate Investing Association. They have a lot of local groups all around the country. And this is a great place to start for new real estate investors because you're going to get a lot of that education through events and training, but of course it's going to cost that annual membership fee. I think the best strategy here is just to join for a year, learn as much and meet as many local investors as you can, and then decide if you want to keep being a member. Another good source to find investor partners is through local real estate investing groups on Facebook. Maybe I'm just old fashioned, but I still prefer the groups that meet at least once a month or so in person. But these online groups can be a good source of contacts as well. Make sure you focus on local groups and ones that are legitimate investor groups, not just some spammy groups where nobody ever interacts. Now, if you're not sure how to find some of these groups, you can always ask around to local real estate agents. It's part of their job to have these connections, so why do all the extra work yourself if you can just ask them? One strategy that's worked for me is creating my own local real estate investors group. And now it's a small group, about 20 people that meet every month or so. Not only is it a way to meet potential investors, but you get a lot of great information on how to manage your own properties and, and finding deals. A lot of the people in your group are going to become investors in your deals or, or are going to pass on those investor contacts. My recommendation here is to start the group early and as a way to exchange information rather than just looking for funding for your property project. Make the group about everybody's benefit and sharing what you've learned. Then after at least a few months, you can start talking about your project and the deal you want to do and then start looking for investors. Keep these groups open to different people in the real estate food chain. Uh, you want some agents, some contractors and trade workers. If you can get a real estate lawyer in there, that's always going to be helpful to have their advice. Our last place to find real estate investors, and this is somewhere nobody else looks but has brought me more funding than anything else, is those local medical professionals and teachers groups. Now these professions, especially doctors and lawyers, these people have lots of money to invest but no time to actively manage their real estate. They want that exposure, man, they're hungry for it, but they just don't have the experience or the time to do it themselves. So what you can do instead of just stalking these groups is offer to do a presentation about real estate investing. Give a 30 minute presentation at their next meetup, talk about a specific investing strategy or something that's really going to highlight your experience. That's going to get your foot in the door and you can make that con those connections and start talking to people about your partnership ideas. Just three more no money down real estate strategies and this next one is called seller financing. Now this is a little like that lease option we talked about earlier but this time you're the one getting the lease option from the property owner. You can either sell the home to someone on a lease option of your own or you can hold it for that buy and rent strategy. Because it's a special type of financing you might be able to get better terms on the down payment or the rate. Now unless it's a very motivated seller you're usually not going to get low rates and no money down. You'll get one or the other but if you can get a property on no money down then you can get renters to cover the payments and you can afford those higher rates. Here one of those three keys to success are really going to come into play. We'll talk about all three in a bit but it's so important to negotiate a good price on these seller financing deals. If you can't turn around and get more for a property in a lease option sale or, or make enough on that rents to cover your own payments, you can get underwater very quickly. You cannot be afraid to walk away from a deal. In fact, my experience as a real estate investor, you should be walking away from more deals than you accept. So we'll talk about different strategies I have in negotiation and how to get that best price when we talk about those three keys to success. So some of the best seller financing deals are going to be from motivated sellers like for sale by owner or bank real estate owned properties. Now banks are in the business of making loans, not owning real estate, so they'll usually let go of these foreclosure homes for much less than they're worth. This next real estate investing hack is one of my new favorites, real estate wholesaling, and this is one where you really are unlimited on the returns. The idea with wholesaling is that you go under contract to buy a property, one you think is a really good deal and where you could find some really strong interest from other investors. You schedule the closing date maybe 30 or 45 days out and then start pitching the property to investors or other buyers. Here instead of looking for investor partnerships though, you're looking to sell the property completely to another buyer. When you find someone, you schedule the closing date for the exact same date as when you'll be signing to buy the property. This is like extreme house flipping because you might actually own the property for all of about 15 minutes between closings. Your buyer's down payment and earnest money is going to cover the money you put down on the house and sometimes even more. 
Sometimes you won't even need to come to the closing with a down payment because you'll just sign over the check from your buyer to the original lender. Now here's where it really pays to be connected into that network of real estate investors because you might only have a few weeks to line up a buyer and arrange for a simultaneous closing. That means you can only go after the sweetest deals, the ones with enough equity in them that you know you can find a buyer quick and you need to have a network of investors you can go to with a good shot that one of them's going to be interested in this deal. Finding these kinds of deep equity properties is going to be the biggest challenge because you really need to be sure on the value. The best are going to be those for sale by owner listings and properties that might not be on the market yet but are for sale. Finding these means driving the neighborhoods, looking for houses with overgrown lawns, ones that maybe look like the nobody lives there or where maybe the owner isn't taking care of the house. Estate sales also work great for this kind of strategy. There are a few things you can look for though, kind of a checklist for wholesaling properties. First is you're looking for properties you can buy for 70% or less of their fair value. Now that's as is or repaired. You want to do a full walkthrough and take some pictures and, and you need to get the right to show you the house to potential buyers as well. Next, you're going to create a fact sheet on the property, including all the details like square footage, uh, property characteristics, neighborhood, value estimates, and repairs needed. You can advertise these on, on Craigslist and the local newspaper and on real estate sites, but I've gotten most of my deals sold directly through my investor contacts in clubs and groups. When you meet with potential buyers or investors, you want to be ready with a comparable sales report to prove the property's value. You always want to have transfer contracts to sign and the details of the agreement. Before the closing, you want the title company to be in contact with your buyer, so you also need to verify the funds from the buyer for the financing. Wholesaling can seem like a very complicated process, and while it can be intense, it can also be fairly easy if you've already got those investor connections and, and know what deals have that quick demand so you can find a buyer fast. Having that 30% or more equity in a property when you sign the contract is a great start because even if you can't find a buyer for that higher price right away, you can always use one of these other investing strategies like buy and rent or lease option and come out way ahead. Now just one more no money required real estate strategy before we get to those three keys that are going to help you with any of these strategies. This one is simply taking over the mortgage payments from the current owner. Now, like with that seller financing strategy, banks aren't in the business of owning real estate. So whenever they have a borrower in trouble, they're more willing to sign over that mortgage to someone else if the new buyer qualifies for the loan. Now, this one works best with short sales. So when someone is selling the home for less than the mortgage or when someone's just trying to get out from under that mortgage. In the two deals like this I've done, it's usually enough to just to take over the payments. But if there's some good equity in the house, then you might be able to sweeten the deal by offering to pay up some of their other debts in lieu of that down payment. Of course, this all has to be worked out with the bank as well, but that's usually just a formality if the owner's falling behind in the payments or, or just isn't able to pay. The bank doesn't want that house. There are so many costs to foreclosing and taking a home. Banks are deathly afraid of REO or real estate owned properties. So those are the seven strategies I've used to buy real estate with no money down or basically no money. Some of these might require as little as three or 5% down, but that's nothing compared to that traditional mortgage with 20% down payment. Now I want to share those three keys, three things to remember that are going to make your real estate investments a success. These are probably three of the most important concepts I've picked up on in over 20 years of real estate investing. First is just learning how to negotiate. Now this is something I see so many investors avoid or just not do very well. And it's too bad because it's a huge opportunity. People just aren't good at negotiating so you can get some great deals if you spend a little time bargaining. Now the start of any successful negotiation is before you even talk to the person. This means doing your homework to know exactly how much the property is worth to both sides. It's not usually the same value. Maybe they're using it as a single family rental but you think you can remodel it into a duplex or maybe the current owner just, just isn't getting as much rent as you could by, by remodeling it and, and it's going to be worth more to you. So you need to know how much it's worth to the seller and the buyer but then also how much it's worth on the market. You do this by looking at similar homes for sale or sold in the neighborhood within the last year. You get this information from Zillow or Realtor.com or your local county assessor will have sales information. Once you're able to compare it with other homes on the market, you can put together a list of comparables that proves the value you want to argue. So this means cherry picking five or so properties that may be sold for a little less per square foot and using that to argue a lower value for the property. One of the biggest negotiating mistakes people make is just going in to argue on the price. If both sides won't budge on the price, where is that going to get you? 
That's why you want a list of other things for which you can negotiate. Things like taxes to be paid or closing costs. You can include repairs to be paid or maybe a longer closing date if you're trying that wholesaling strategy. The idea is you want at least three to five other points on which you can negotiate to get a little bit more value out of the deal. And again, never be afraid to walk away from a deal. There are tens of millions of properties just in the US alone, and, and the odds are that you'll never find another deal or close to zero. The second key for real estate success here is using multiple strategies and diversifying your property portfolio. Now you'll notice that some of these no money down strategies can be started right away, while others it helps to have some experience and connections. Some might work better when the economy isn't doing so well, while others are a be better bet during economic growth. If you can combine at least two or three of these strategies, then you'll always have a plan B and you'll always make money. For example, if you have a solid rental business where you set tenants up with a lease option, you'll always have a way out if you can't find a buyer for that wholesaling strategy. Using some of those loan based strategies is also going to set you up to get funding to buy more properties. Now, one point that most real estate investors miss is that idea of diversifying in different property types. Now, this is crucial, but almost always underappreciated. Different property types, so residential, office, industrial, and storage, all have different management needs and characteristics. Having a mix of at least a few of these is going to give you that best of all worlds and, and really help smooth out your cash flows. You'll be able to find a broader list of investors and buyers and won't be caught when one property type tumbles because of the economy. Last here is just to take it slow and learn how to be a successful real estate investor. Now, this might not sound like much of a key to success, especially since I know you're already committed to learning since you're, you're watching this video, but you would be amazed at how many property investors are ruined every single year. More than just about any other investment, because of those huge numbers behind real estate, including buying and leveraging a property, there are a lot of catastrophic mistakes that will bankrupt you. You don't see it in stocks and bonds where one company goes under and you may lose a small portion of your wealth. You mess up in real estate and you're on the hook for everything. That's why I love some of these no money down strategies so much because the risk is going to be lower, but there are still some major stumbling points. So take it slow, buy a couple of properties and maybe two or three of these strategies and take a year to learn how to be successful before you put on those other properties and, and move into other strategies. Those were your seven strategies for buying real estate with no money down and three keys to investing success. Don't forget to share your favorite real estate strategy or the property type you're interested in below in the comments. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just scroll down and ask it in the comments and we'll answer it in a future video.